And I'm very pleased to say that the England cricketer and owner of the Tap and Run pub, Stuart Broad, joins me now. Stuart, good to see you this morning. What made you want to go into the pub sector? Uh, great question, actually. Yeah, a great friend, friend of mine, Harry Gurney, uh, came to me years ago uh, in 2016 and his local pub had come up for sale and, and asked if I was interested. You know, we talked in the change room a lot. I was a teammate at Nottinghamshire with him uh, about business and, and that was something that we really wanted to do. And it's, we've evolved a huge amount over that time. It probably started as a little bit of a hobby for myself and, and uh, Harry definitely saw it as... Uh, 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 an avenue as a career after after playing cricket, um, but it, the business plans evolved a huge amount, and, and you know we're very clear that we want to be a, a growing business now and, and collecting a few different pubs so, along the way. And delighted that we're here at the Tap and Run, having been rebuilt after a devastating fire um, a year ago, and, and it, it looks absolutely stunning. So um, yeah, delighted that we're we're back up and running here. It does look very nice from here, Stuart. Um, I mean, was there any doubt in your, yours and Harry's mind when the pub burned down that you were going to have to reopen it? Were, were you tempted to walk away? Yeah, great question, actually, because I remember so clearly it was during the Trent Bridge test match and, and Harry called me at you know, 5.30 in the morning saying that the pub was on fire, which was obviously a huge shock. And uh, I had to play the, the rest of the test match. So the day after I, I came to the site um, and it was devastating. You know, it was a complete write off, really, and could only look through the windows because of the damage. It took eight fire engines to, to put the blaze out. And I was, I was uh, quite emotional at, at seeing it and, and my business partner, Harry, um, I was sort of quite interested to see what his views were and he was so positive straight away. Bear in mind, this was two or three days after the fire. Uh, he had no doubts that he wanted to, to, to build it back bigger, better. Um, you know, we've had amazing support from the local community and ultimately when you, when you own local pubs, that's what you're doing it for. You want it to be a community for people to, to enjoy each other's time and meet different people. And um, Harry was so, so driven and so positive about what we could do to make the business even better and, and it's come to fruition. I mean, it's just it's so special being here and seeing um, the plans come, come to place. It's you know, been open 10 days now and we've been amazingly supported, not just by the local community, but, but from people travelling afar as well. So, no, it was, it, there was a bit of doubt in my mind with the emotions initially, but, but Harry doused those and, and uh, it has been hugely positive. You mentioned you've got plans to open uh, a few more establishments. I mean, one of the big challenges that all small businesses have is, is access to credit. Do you think that's going to be a problem for you down the line? Yeah, I mean, uh, one, one line that Harry and I always use is, uh, you know, we, we have to be cautiously optimistic in this, this industry. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, a fan it's a fantastic industry to be a part of, and, and Harry runs it. Uh, day to day and has learned a huge amount over the, over the past few years, particularly after finishing playing cricket. Um, but, you know, one thing that we love about the industry of the people, and I think that's where it's so similar to, to sport, is um, sport a lot of the time, especially playing a team sport, is about the people involved and the culture involved in it, and, and the pub industry is exactly the, exactly the same as that. Um, you know, I think it's quite difficult to look too far ahead. Obviously, we have a business plan of, of how we'd like things to go and grow the business, whether that's five pubs in the next five years or ten in ten. Um, but we sort of we need to just see how the opening of, of the tap and run goes um, over the summer, um, building up uh, sort of finances and, and, and looking to the future. We've got a pub um, near Rothley in Leicestershire called The Griffin that's that's been doing fantastically uh, since December when we took on. So... Um, there's definitely a mindset for, for growth, but, but we also have to, to be a little bit cautious in, in the pace in which we do that, because ultimately you don't want to ever put any quality in, in doubt, and, and um, it's important that we get the quality spot on here before we, before we look to, to grow. Absolutely. Now, uh, you've got a, a week off or so before the next test at Old Trafford. Um, one thing that's been raised... I mean, you've had a fantastic series so far, top wicket-taker, but um, England's catching's left a bit to be desired at times. Is there going to be a little extra catching practice? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a funny one. You know, we've been, we've been excellent over the past year with, with our catching. We just, uh, we've put a, a couple of catches down in, the, in this series. And fortunately, at, at Leeds, it, it didn't hurt us too much. We managed to, to win a game. And to be honest, having played in all three Ashes Test matches so far, it's, it's been breathtaking stuff. It's been very emotional to play in. It's been very tiring. But it's, um, 
it, it, it's been incredible cricket. You know, I think every single game the results could have gone either way. And, and when cricket is so close like that, you do start to look at, at certain different things in your game that you can that you can get right. And you know, we know a couple of catches of, of, and mistakes have probably hurt us. Uh, in the th- in the three test matches, um, but we've got two to go. You know, two, we need to win both, and and we feel really positive about that. I, I, catching is such an interesting one for me, and having played a long time now, it's almost the more you talk about it and the more you practice, it becomes a bit of a mental thing, and and you focus too much on it. The key to catching is staying very relaxed in the shoulders and very relaxed in the hands, and things just happen naturally. So I don't think we'll talk about it much as a team. We just have huge faith in each other's ability that when that chance comes uh, we'll take it but uh, yeah it was looking back to Sunday it was just breathtaking stuff to be a part of my nerves I mean, I'm 37 years old but I don't think I've ever been as nervous as, as I was on, <laughs> on Sunday afternoon um, so uh, nice to get through that we've got a few days off meet up in Manchester on Saturday rest the bodies a little bit and and um, you know it feels like there's a bit of ashes, ashes fever around the country at the minute and we need to jump on that that bandwagon and, and keep playing good cricket Absolutely. I mean, it was great seeing you getting in the Aussies' faces at Lords after the uh, Bearstow something incident. But uh, I mean, the, Gideon Haig, the Australian cricket writer, wrote in the Times today that uh, you know you're you're the man that the Aussies love to hate. But he said he got gets the sense that you're actually the people that a few Australians now might hate to love. <laughs> um, I must admit, yeah, I, um, sometimes I like to just get in a little battle for myself. I knew that I had, it was such an important moment of that game at Lords, and I needed to make sure I was mentally switched on and able to do a job for, for Ben Stokes at the other end. So um, part of my strategy really was to, to pick a fight with a couple of Australians to, so I wouldn't be focusing on too much technique. I would just be focusing on the ball and making sure I could stay there. So, um, yeah, I mean, part of Ashes cricket and the, the, the rivalry, the history of it is, is very much a, a great battle out there. And, and both teams have, have been really stuck in this series. Um, but it has been, you know, it, 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 a lot of the players know each other very well. Um, there's a lot of sort of talking and smiles. We lunch in the same room, you know. It's not as if there's, there's a huge huge battle going on um, off the pitch it's just you're playing for your country I'd expect nothing less than showing a huge amount of passion and pride um, and you know just from being on there on the field all the time the the energy I'm feeling from the crowd and from the supporters and from the cricket fans around the country uh, has been magical so um, you know we'll keep trying to entertain and put on some brilliant cricket for people to love um, and uh, keep letting us know that you're enjoying it. We will indeed. Stuart, pleasure to talk to you. Best of luck for Old Trafford and best of luck with the tap and run too. Thank you.